as mentioned in a previous video, uh, there's more than one way to close under or over allocated overhead to multiple accounts or one way to close the overhead account. In pre previous videos, we've been closing it all to cost of goods sold. However, it can be prorated to multiple T accounts. So we're going to see how that works in this video. Here we have the SAF radio company. They use a normal costing system. So once again, always be picking out these words, making sure that you understand what they mean. With a single manufacturing overhead cost pool and machine hours as the allocation base. So machine hours is our cost driver, so our cost allocation base. The following data are for 2009, so we're given budgeted information and actual information here. That's going to be helpful for us. Machine hours data and the ending balances are as follows. So we have cost of goods sold, finished goods, and work in process information. The first thing we do, which is always our first step in the process, is to calculate our overhead rate. So again, that's estimated overhead divided by estimated allocation base. So our estimated overhead, they tell us in the story here, is $4,800,000. And our allocation base we know is machine hours, and the estimated machine hours, or budgeted machine hours, same thing, 80,000 machine hours. So that's dollars divided by machine hours, so we're going to have a dollar per machine hour rate. This comes out to $60 per machine hour. So now we will use this rate to close or compute our applied overhead and then close overhead to certain accounts. The first method we'll do as our normal method, closing our ending balance of overhead under applied or over applied directly to cost of goods sold. So after we've calculated our rate, which we know is $60 per machine hour, we're gonna take that $60 and multiply it times what actually happened with the allocation base. And we know from the story that we actually used 75,000 machine hours, so the amount of applied or allocated overhead is four and a half million dollars. Now that we've got the amount that's applied to the job, we can put that in our overhead T account. So four and a half million goes on the credit side because that's where the applied overhead is put. The actual overhead from the story we know is 4900000 So we can see that we have a balance here. And it looks like that our debits are higher than the credits. So we're going to have a debit balance here. And the difference is $400,000. So we did not apply enough cost. So we are under applied. We did not apply enough cost to the job. Again, recall that we do not want to have a balance in overhead. So we want this closed. So in this first step, we're closing any balance in overhead to cost of goods sold. So we have a debit balance in overhead. So to get rid of that debit balance, we will have to credit overhead for that $400,000. And we're currently closing it all to cost of goods sold. So we're increasing our cost because we were under applied. We didn't apply enough cost. So when we fix this problem, we should increase our cost thereby decreasing net income. Now we use this method typically when our overhead balance is immaterial. A second method we can use to close the balance in, in overhead is to close it to work in process, finished goods, and cost of goods sold. So the three inventory accounts there. And we can do that based on ending balances, a proration or a proportion of those balances. So if we go back to our original material that we were given, machine hours total in those three accounts added up to 75,000 machine hours. That's going to be important if we want a proration. And the ending balances add up to $10 million if we add them all together. So the first step is to calculate a proportion for each one of these T accounts. So for cost of goods sold, there was an $8 million ending balance out of a total of $10 million for all these three T accounts. So that gives us a proportion of 80% or 0.8. Work in process, 
had a balance of 750000 out of a total of $10 million for these 3T accounts, giving us 0 0.075 or 0.75%. I'll just keep these in um, points to make it consistent. So we'll leave that as 0 0.8. And then finished goods, one and a quarter million dollar balance out of the total of $10 million gives us 0.125 or 12.5%. Now we're going to use these proportions to allocate the amount that was under or over applied. In this case, it was $400,000 that was under applied. So we're going to multiply this times this $400,000. So basically what we're doing is spreading this $400,000 out over these three T accounts. So the amount that's going to get allocated to cost of goods sold will be 320000 so the majority of it. The amount allocated to work in process would be 30000 and the amount allocated to finished goods will be $50,000. Now again, these should add up to that $400,000 that we are allocating out to our three different T accounts. Now, how would we journalize the closing of overhead to these three T accounts? Well, we have a debit balance and overhead, so again, to get rid of that, if we're using one overhead T account, we would credit overhead for that total 400000 We would debit cost of goods sold for 320000 We would debit our work in process T account for 30000 And we would debit finished goods for 50000 if we had been overapplied, the journal entry would just be reversed. Now, if you are using two overhead T accounts, then your journal entry would look slightly different. We would still have a debit to cost of goods sold, a debit to work in process, a debit to finished goods for the 320, the 30, and the 50,000. And if you look back at the original T account above, we would have that T account kind of split apart. We'd have one T account with actual overhead of 4.9 million, and we would have another T account for applied overhead at 4.5 million. And both of those have to get closed. One has a credit balance, one has a debit balance. The overhead allocated would have a credit balance, and we would need to get rid of that with a debit of 4.5 million. And the actual overhead, we'll call this actual, would have 4.9 million debit balance. To get rid of that, I would have to credit it. So these are the same journal entries. It just depends on whether you use you are using one overhead T account or you're using two overhead T accounts. And the last method for closing any under or over allocated overhead is to use a proration based on the overhead allocated in the ending balances of work in process, finished goods, and cost of goods sold. So the first step would be to take that four and a half million dollars and allocate it to the each one of these accounts, cost of goods sold, work in process, and finished goods, using that sixty dollar per machine hour rate that we calculated at the very beginning. So recall that our rate was sixty dollars per machine hour. And we're given our machine hours here for each one of these accounts. Remember, we multiply a rate times what actually happened with the allocation base. So we need actual numbers. So if we take that rate and multiply it times each one of these, we will get an amount. So let's do that now. So I'm going to take $60. I'm going to do it down here in this box. Times 60,000 hours. That gives me $3,600,000. If I take that $60 per machine hour rate, multiply it times 11,000 for uh, finished goods, I get $660,000. And if I take that $60 rate times 4,000 hours, I get $240,000. Now, all three of these should add up to that $4.5 million that we allocated to the job and overhead. 
Now we can calculate our proportions. So we're going to take that $3.6 million that we found divided by the total $4.5 million. That will give us our proportion for cost of goods sold. It comes out again to 0.8, just like we got with the other pr proration method. Work in process came out to be 240000 Divide that by the $4.5 million. And that gives us 0 0.0533. I think it's a repeating decimal. And finished goods was $660,000 divided by a total of four and a half million that we're allocating. That gave us 0.14, and I'm gonna round up to 0.67. And again, the amount of under and over allocated amount was 400,000. And I put under and or over allocated because it doesn't matter which way it goes, you're still allocating it to these things, but keep in mind we were under applied that will affect your, your journal entry, obviously. And so the adjustment amount, what gets allocated to cost of goods sold, just like with our other proration amount was 320,000. Work in process is 21,333, and finished goods would be 58,667. And the last step would be to journalize this. So I'm gonna use just the journal entry with using one overhead T account. So we would debit cost of goods sold and work in process and finished goods for these amounts because we were under applied. So 320,000 goes to cost of goods sold, 21,333 and 58,667 would go to finished goods. And we would credit overhead Again, using one overhead T account, if that's what we're doing, for the entire uh, amount of under allocated of $400,000. So again, if we were over allocated, this journal entry would just be reversed. So cost of goods sold, work in process, finished goods would all be credited for those amounts, and overhead would have been debited for that amount. And these are the three methods that are used for closing out any balance in the overhead T account.